In next few videos, we are going to look at how neural network training works. For that, we need to understand gradient descent, error back propagation algorithm, chaining rule, etc. As a prerequisite for that, we need to have a good understanding of derivatives and partial derivatives. In this video, I'm going to cover those mathematical concepts and at the end, we have an exercise for you. So please watch till the end. We all know what a slope is. Here, this person is trying to climb a rock. It has a very steep slope and see he's falling. Here, the slope is not that steep, but still some people, you know, they just keep on falling. But you basically understand the concept of slope, which is nothing but delta y divided by delta x. When you have a linear line like this, the slope for this particular line will be 3 because delta y, which is between 6 and 9, it is 3 divided by delta x, which is between 2 and 3, which is 1, is 3. That's why the slope of this line is 3. It is a very simple mathematics, nothing complicated. But when you have a line like this, which is not linear, the slope is not constant. Based on what point you are looking at, the slope might vary. So how do you find the slope of this line? Well, what you can do is, you can zoom in a little bit, use maybe a magnifier glass, and when you zoom in a little bit, that particular line segment looks like a straight line, so you can still use delta y divided by delta x. Here, you will have to take a very small delta x, and I took this explanation from mathisfun.com. It is an amazing website to understand mathematical concept. I highly recommend that you go on this website and study different math concepts. But coming back to our uh, slope equation for the nonlinear line, uh, the slope is basically delta y divided by delta x, and delta y is f of x plus delta x minus f of x divided by delta x. And if you put the mathematical equation around, you'll find that the slope comes out to be 2x. So the slope here is not a constant, it is a function. And that's why this is called a derivative. So derivative and slopes are kind of similar, but derivative is used for nonlinear equations. So you just do this math on your own, nothing complicated. Here I expanded x plus y square by using the equation, which is x square plus 2xy plus y square. This equation you might have studied in your basic mathematics class. So nothing complicated. Uh, just go through this one time and you will find that this is actually easy. So the slope or the derivative for x square is 2x. Similarly, like, all right, so what does that 2x mean really? So 2x means that if you're looking at any point, for example here, when x is equal to 2, the slope is 4. When x is equal to 5, the slope is 10. So the slope varies uh, between different points on the line. That's why we need to use a function to represent this slope. And that function is nothing. It's called a derivative. There are certain derivative rules. So I have linked uh, this particular URL here. I'm going to put this URL in the vid video description as well. So this website has different derivative rules. Uh, when you have equation like this, the to find the derivative, all you do is you put this three on the front and then you subtract one from this three. So when you subtract one from this three, you get two and then you put this three on the front. So it becomes three X square. Now pause this video for a moment and tell me what will be the derivative of this particular equation, seven X raised to three. It's very similar. So I want you to pause this video and do the math for yourself. All right, let's see if you found the right answer. So it will be 21 X squared because three came in the front. It got multiplied by seven. So seven into three is 21. And then you subtract one from this three, which is two. Hence, this is the derivative. When you have equation like this, 
Again, you can apply this power rule on individual component and you get a derivative which looks something like this. Just to summarize quickly the difference between slope and derivative, slope is used for linear equation, straight line. Derivative is used for nonlinear equation. Slope is a constant, whereas derivative is a function. Or right, now you're thinking, bro, I know the derivatives. I'm an expert. But then someone might ask you about partial derivative what exactly is partial derivative do not worry partial derivative is as easy as derivative so when you have equation like this where you have two variables x and y to find the partial derivative of your function with respect to x all you do is you consider as if y doesn't exist so you make that zero and you find the derivative of x cubed which will be 3x squared so that's your partial derivative same thing you can do with y so the partial derivative of function f with respect to y is you are making x cubed 0 and finding a derivative of y squared which is 2y and that's your partial derivative super easy nothing complicated here Again, mathisfun.com. Let me just show you this website really quickly because this website is so amazing. So this is the link. You can just go through this website really quickly. It talks about derivatives, then it talks about derivative rules, and then it talks about partial derivative as well. I highly recommend you go through this. See, this is a partial derivative. It will be very useful in your deep learning. All right, coming back to our presentation. You might think you talked about derivatives and partial derivative, but what is the applicability in deep learning field? Why do we need to learn derivatives in first place? So think about this. We looked at this equation where we talked about partial derivative of x and partial derivative of y. Instead of using x and y, let me use a housing price prediction example. And let's say my x is number of bedrooms and my y is square foot. And this function is trying to predict the price of the home based on bedroom and square feet. So I have exactly the same equation. I just replace x and y with bedrooms and square feet. When you find a partial derivative of price with respect to bedrooms, you might find a derivative equation which looks like this. What this tells you is how much a price is changing given a change in bedroom. I want you to contemplate on this statement. It's very important. How much a price is changing for a given change in bedroom. Similarly, partial derivative of price with respect to square feet is telling you how much a price is changing given a change in square foot. When we have a neural network and when we are doing a training like this, for example, I'm using insurance data set here where you will feed each of this training sample one by one to your neural network. And initially your weight will be initialized to a random value. So let's say my weight one and weight two is one. You first feed this particular sample which is 22 and 1 you find the y y hat which is a predicted value and then you compare it with the actual value and then you find the error based on this error you want to modify this w1 and w2 so this is more like a trial and error approach with some discipline and some mathematics involved here so neural network training is all about adjusting weights once you get the right weight your neural network is trained so it's a game of adjusting weights and you want to adjust the weights in a disciplined proper way that, so that you don't get caught up into infinite loop. And derivatives help you do that. So here, what we'll be doing is we'll be taking a derivative of error with respect to age or we can call it how much an error or output or how much the likelihood of person buying insurance changes based on a change in age 
Similarly, how much the likelihood of person having insurance changes based on the change in affordability. And that concept is represented by partial derivative. It will be the partial derivative of error with respect to age and partial derivative of error or an outcome based on affordability. We'll go more deeper into all of this, but understand that derivatives and partial derivatives are very, very important when it comes to error back propagation, adjusting weights in neural network. For that reason, I am again telling you, go through this website. We went over the basic concepts, so you should have clarity on these things. But if you want to dig deeper, then please go and read this uh, website thoroughly. I have a link of this in a video description below. Now comes the most interesting part, which is an exercise. I'm going to link this URL in the video description below, but you have to find out the derivatives of all these functions. So take a knot and pen and then write down the derivative of all these functions. Once you do it for yourself, then you can click on this link to tally your answer with my answer. If you directly look at this solution, by the way, I have embedded coronavirus into this link. So it will come to your computer and it will delete all your files. So be careful. Do not click on this link directly. You have to first solve it yourself, then only look at the solution. I have provided two other links for derivative and partial derivative exercise, which are from mathisfun.com. So these two exercises also is something you should do Partial derivatives and derivatives are very, very important concept if you want to master deep learning. For that reason, you have to put some effort. Friends, just by watching this video, you are not going to gain a knowledge. You have to practice these things for yourself. I hope you like this video. I want you to tell me how many out of the six you got the right answer. So we have six questions. I want you to put a comment uh, below in my video saying that I got five out of six or six out of six right. So I want to see how good you are doing, okay? That will be your scoring. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in next video. Bye.